Now I'm going to set up to show you the A to D and D to A, but before I do, let me just briefly show you what this circuit is. It consists of an analog devices 670 A to D converter. The input is applied on the left. A clock signal is applied at this point, and at this point it's a 10 kilohertz clock. We'll change that a little later. The output of the A to D converter is being latched in a 374 using the clock signal, and then that is being fed to an AD 557. Once again, the AD stands for analog devices, and in this case it's a D to A converter. It converts that digital to an analog signal at this point where this oscilloscope test probe is located. Now right now, I have this power supply set to the input, and as I vary the input up to about, the, well, I have it set up to go to about two and a half volts full scale. Over here, you see on the oscilloscope, at the top is the clock signal. The bottom trace is the D to A output. So let me try to hold this as I lower the, the D to A input, or the A to D input, and you watch the output go back to zero, as you see there. So, in other words, what this circuit is basically doing is simply converting an analog signal to digital, latching the digital value, the 8 bits, then reconverting those 8 bits back to an analog signal. And of course, if all you were trying to do is just measure a single voltage, there's a lot better ways to do that than this. And in fact, A to D converters and D to A converters have largely become obsolete in the chip form. The reason is that, for example, in Arduino, this is an 8-bit system. An Arduino, I think, offers a 10-bit or 12-bit A to D converter on board, and it has an A to D converter for each input. So, for example, an Uno, I think, has six or eight analog inputs, each of which has its own A to D converter, its own internal logic, and it can convert digital back to analog and put that out on the same pin if you switch the mode from input to output. So basically everything that you see here is now inside an Arduino several times over and an Arduino costs about the same as this chip. So obviously this is not an economic way to do anything these days but it's intended here only as a test vehicle to allow us to begin comparing logic analyzers, and that's the reason for all this history about how you, logic was analyzed in the early days. One of the logic analyzers that I'll be looking at is that Rigol. Uh, this is the MSO 1074Z, and of course the other, if you followed any of my other videos, you know I'm a big advocate also for the analog discovery. And as I always say in these videos, I don't have any connection with any of these companies. I'm a retired uh, research director, and so I just play around with stuff, but uh, I do think the analog discovery is a great tool in these environments. So let me set up to start doing some of that. Now what I've done is I have connected channel 1 of the oscilloscope to the analog input that is the input to the analog to digital converter, and I've connected channel 2 to the output of the digital to analog converter. So this is the analog input, gets converted to 8-bit digital, then it gets latched in that 374 and fed to the output digital to analog converter where it's converted back to analog. Now if you note the output, you see that it has a little stair-step pattern to it. That is because 
the input frequency or the clock frequency of the device is right now set to 10 kilohertz. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise that to 20 kilohertz, but I'd like you to be able to watch the screen as I do so. And particularly pay attention to the steps. This is 10. That's 20. Notice that when I go to 20 kilohertz, those steps largely disappear, or at least they get a lot closer together. So the speed that you operate A to D converters, of course, determines what kind of output you get, both in the digital domain and in the analog domain. So here you, you see we have a sine wave. What I'm going to do is now put in a square wave as the analog signal. And there you see it reproduces that pretty well. I'm also going to do a ramp signal, or triangle in this case. And once again, you see that it works its way through the system pretty well.